Help me! You gotta help me! Oh. Hey, 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 hey! What is it? I see. What's wrong? You let that farm peek in here? Get out! Call the police! That won't be necessary, Father. I'll take care of them. Please, my apologies. Everybody sit down. Who's the office? You. They get a little carried away sometimes, but they're good boys. I trust them to do the right thing. I trust you'll do the right thing. I trust you'll do the right thing. Father Bernard, they wanted to kill me. You've been dead 50 years. Little Bernard, is that really you? Oh, God, forgive me. Will you haunt me forever? I'd muzzle him if I were you. Welcome to Highlander Rewatch, the podcast where each and every week we talk about another facet of the Highlander universe. I'm one of your rewatchers. I'm Keith. This is Kyle. That this quote's is actually about me. About Kyle. This is Eamon. Hey, guys. How's it going? Jawsome. All right. Getting are you ready to the... jump into this week's episode? Yeah. Getting into the holiday spirit with Nazis. That's, <laughs> that's, how, that's how it's done, right? That's right. Yeah. So before we jump into this week's episode, which is season three, episode 19, we got a little reader mail to tackle. Ooh. Uh, so two people wrote us about uh, last week's episode. Keith, what kind of mail Two weeks it? ago episode. <laughs> reader mail, of course. <laughs> yeah. uh, so mail. two people wrote us about uh, our comments on Take Back the Night. Um, so Palo P. The, we've got a Palo reader. Mm-hmm. reader. There is a Palo Listener. reader. Yeah, so there are three there, Palos. There, there are so many Palos. It's Palo Inception right now. <laughs> Palo, Palo, Palo. <laughs> chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. <laughs> nah. We wondered what kind of car Mac was driving because I was like, oh, he hops in the T-Bird. It's like, wait a minute. It's not the T-Bird. He's driving this other thing in Paris. So Palo writes us. And he says, the car Mac drives in Paris is a Citroën DS. It made history across Europe back then. One of the first to mount hydraulic suspensions in the 50s. Oh, that is a level of detail I was not expecting. Yeah, right? And then also, uh, we got uh, some reader mail from Adam B. Oh. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Adam B. read us. Uh, we were curious about the like the Pictus tribe or whatever. The, the Picks. The Picks, right. Picks. So he says, it was Tasty interesting. Tasty Pick. <laughs> Bonehead. <laughs> What is that from? <laughs> You'll get there. Hold on. Ghostbusters 2. Damn it. Ah. That's, uh, that's him ta- taunting Vigo the yeah. Carpathian. <laughs> Go on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Deep cuts here. Yep. Because only a bonehead would pick now to come back, right? <laughs> choose now and choose New York. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So he says it's interesting that they said... Sidwin, Kierdwin, Kidwin, whatever. Oh, also, I listened back to the episode. <laughs> you went to the tape. It We're is, always threatening to check the tape. It and is we kind of absolutely Kierdwin. And how are you listening to this? Like, uh, what? Is this uh, on Hulu? YouTube. Oh, so maybe the YouTube version is different than oh, the TV. Okay, okay. Oh, that's yeah, it. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah, that's. So it's Kidwin? Kierdwin. They say an R? Yes, there is an R. Are you sure? I am, <laughs> I am also sure. One hundred percent sure. And honestly, I have no idea where you got Sidwin from. He I guess just really just, likes the name Sid. Yeah. Sid the Squid. You like Sid? He's a real I don't. Know. I don't know. Sid's bath. <laughs> That's when you have uh, chicken pox. You have to take a Sid's bath. It's like a goop you have to put in your tub. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> This sounds like a fetish. <laughs> anyway. Sounds like Ghostbusters 2 again. Yeah. yeah. Uh, all fetish. right. Yeah, it really is a goop in a tub. Goop. So Adam B. writes us, It was interesting that they said Kierdwin was from the Asini tribe originally, as this was the tribe led by Boudica? Boudica. Boudica in a rebellion against the Romans circa A.D. 60. Oh. Although the Asini were not a Pictus tribe as Sidwin, Sirdwin, Kierdwin, oh boy, there we go. is said to be. So there wow. we go. Little deep dive into that. Thanks, Adam Ballsy. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all of our listener mail? That's all the reader mail we have this week. <laughs> what, that's the whole show. 
Okay, so should we uh, jump into this week's episode? Yeah, yeah. Mortal All right, Sins. So, Mortal Sins. This episode was first Why aired. Why not Immortal Sins? Because Duncan was perfect in this episode. As usual. As usual. Well, Bernard had some sins. Bernard. Yeah, I think this is about Bernard's sinning. I, right. I agree with but that. But then there's an evil Nazi immortal, so right. I could have called it Immortal Sins. I don't know. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. That's okay. why people are tuning in. So, this Hit first me. aired May 8th, 1995. The director was Mario Azubardi. I can't do it as well. Mario Azubardi. It's a me. Mario. How many stars do we need to collect to unlock this episode? What episode was it again? 19. 19. 19, 19, stars. 19 stars. 19 stars. That yeah. makes sense. Okay, so. This checks out. Uh, he's directed some stuff before that we've seen, right? This is his second of five Highlander episodes. His first was Rite of Passage. Mm. Oh, yeah. Which had that nip slip. Ooh. <laughs> I didn't get it. I didn't get the nip slip. No. Literally only you got the nips, nip slip. I get Sidwin. I get nip these slip. DVDs. These DVDs are, are packed sure? with bonus content. It's pronounced Nipe Slip. <laughs> <laughs> I went back and watched the YouTube tape. What? <laughs> <laughs> For you. this Nipe Slip. <laughs> Also, Keith sneezed. Bless you, Keith. Thank you. Bless the child. Also, we're talking about nip slips and a picture of a baby just fell out of your binder, Keith. Oh, that's for later. Sorry. <laughs> it is. That was a tot slot. That's Ew. really... Tot <laughs> nope. That's in <laughs> That's legitimately for later. For, an off, for an off-air thing. Yeah, uh, sure. Racing for impact. <laughs> okay. So, I was looking him up on IMDb. He has a new movie called Habilni Ha Nirba. Nope. How do you say it? Mm-mm. I don't know. I just, <laughs> oh, it just can't be oh, that, right? Okay. It's definitely not what you just said, <laughs> okay. but, but go on. Habilni ha, 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 ha han nirba. Right. I think so. Go on. I don't Nilbog? Is this Nilbog. a troll? It's, Nilbog. it's, it's a troll too. Sequel? Anyway, sequel, it's yeah. in post-production, but the IMDb episode or movie description is it says, based on a true story and ripped from local headlines, four underage girls bet who would get pregnant first by a young man they all fancied. What? Yep. I'm on board. <laughs> what? Yeah. Oh, fuck this. All right, go on. Mario. All right, so that's Mario. He also did some, like, sweating bullets with Ken Gord and mm. plenty of other TV. Stargate Atlantis, SG-1. He seems to be a real firecracker. That's right. He worked on all the Stargates, didn't he? I think so. Deep, I, I have a real soft spot Space for those. Nine. Deep, is that a Stargate? Stargate, 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 Stargate Voyager. Stargate Voyager was my favorite. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, uh, controversy over this new Stargate discovery. <laughs> Real uh, mixed up. People are no one either wants to pay $6 love it or hate it. For CBS ABC. Or ABC or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. All People right. are like, oh, I really want more Star Trek. What? I have to pay $6? Fuck this. Go it's really on. weird. It's like get an app to watch Star Trek. Yeah. What else do they have? I don't know what else is on. I mean, I think they were hoping this was going to do it for them. I think this I is, haven't seen it yet. So they're I hoping this is going to be like their anchor show, I think. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it is, mm. but. Mm. Right in. Okay, so this episode was written by Lauren Shore, uh, who Larry had a cameo. Shore. That's right, Larry Shore, who had a cameo in the last episode we watched in Testimony as the guy in the airport. Yeah, complaining, complaining about, about his wife, wife and yeah. fiance. <laughs> yeah. This is his seventh of nine Highlander episodes, and I recently, because we always talk about Hanukkah hoops when this comes up, it's only two more episodes from him, so we'll probably forget all about Hanukkah hoops after we're done his episodes. But I contacted the director of Hanukkah hoops this time. No response back. No response. <laughs> Nothing. Wait, let's walk through this. How did you con? Who is the director? First of all, I don't have his name written down right Steven here. Steven Spielberg. So, Steven how Spielberg. did you reach out to him on Twitter? Oh, it's just pronounced at- Twitter or, or, or <laughs> DM. Ooh, it's Twitter. Well, I can't DM him because he doesn't follow us. Oh, okay. So, so you had to at you him. You can't I dungeon master him. him. Yeah. Mm. Did he say, "Don't at me"? Right. <laughs> Don't at me, bro. We'll keep at it. Yep. We'll like, find, we'll get some details. We'll what, eventually see this movie. W- hey. What are we gonna do when we finally get the chance to see it? Like, I feel like we'll this needs it. like we'll something. Well, I feel like we need to do something auspicious for the occasion. Well, we'll we should a, just do an a episode live of stream. Or yeah, something. we'll do it. Listeners, I'm serious. Tweet at the director. Oh, yeah. of this movie in hordes yeah be incessant and insufferable <laughs> we want to know about hanukkah hoops we yeah. want our hoops yeah apparently the movie has come out at some what? point it's been screened oh, it looks yeah. like at fundraisers and like it's a done deal well, let's try like. to raise some funds yeah, yeah let's do it we can be part of the project shalom <laughs> from downtown 
All right, so guest stars in this episode, we've got Lisa Howard back as Anne. Dr. I'm Anne. mentioning her because she hasn't really been in much recently, but in the show. Always e- very glad to see oh, Dr. Boy. Anne. <laughs> oh, boy. Andrew Woodall as Ernst Daimler. He's our Nazi. He's our Nazi. <laughs> yeah. He's uh, our Nazi. And Roger Brett as Father Bernard. And this guy was... I think oh. you're pronouncing it. I think it was just Bernard. Bernard. <laughs> and two other Highlander episodes. He was the vendor in Legacy. Uh, and by vendor, I mean he's the guy being like, tomatoes from the New World or whatever. Oh, shit. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. And Duncan's like, oh, are those potatoes or whatever? He's like, no, tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> you say. <laughs> That's right. You say tomato. I say a different vegetable. <laughs> <laughs> and oh, he was Brother tuber. Andre in Counterfeit Part 1. Oh. How about that? Right. Always a priest of some kind. Yep. Yeah. Shall we get into the episode description? Let's uh, do it. You know, I'm on the edge of my seat for this one because I just feel like anything with a Nazi, you're gearing up for this. <laughs> when a young foreigner is chased into his Paris church by white supremacists, Father Bernard sees a man he remembers from his youth in Nazi occupied France and thought long dead. In flashback to 1943 Paris, immortal Ernst Damler is a Nazi officer, and Duncan is part of a resistance group based at a monastery. While Duncan leads the resistance group as they ambush a Nazi courier, little Bernard sees him shot, die, and revive. But Duncan binds Bernard to secrecy. In modern day, Father Bernard him to secrecy. <laughs> Father old. Bernard realizes Damler is also an immortal and asks Duncan to help stop Damler, who is now the leader of a white supremacist group working for a cause within the system. What? <laughs> wow. Also, <laughs> also, <laughs> also, Anne tells Duncan that she is pregnant. But Duncan isn't sure if his lifestyle can allow for raising a child. <laughs> you can't pin this down, baby. His alternative lifestyle. I'm a swinging bachelor. I can't get tied down. <laughs> Wait, he's also a cowboy. Yeah. I'm a swinging cowboy. I can't be tied down on this here open range. These doggies ain't going to move along by themselves now. Let's do some line dancing. Did you read that article that line dancing was just made up as like dancing <laughs> so that you wouldn't be dancing to rock and roll? What? I read so, like, a headline. The, the, I didn't read the article, but it was just like, <laughs> oh, oh, no, okay, go. good, good. Oh, good. But <laughs> what this is getting at was that line dancing was just created so that white people wouldn't dance to like black music. Whoa, I could see that as a thing. So I don't know. I'm going to research this further, and then in like three months, we can have an update. <laughs> so like Johnny B. Good was making the rounds, and they're like, don't, yeah. no, like, Johnny B. Good. We got to find a way to have you step. <laughs> They're like, no, Johnny be bad. <laughs> line dance instead. Yeah. Did you guys have to do line dancing in high school? No. no. I did in junior high. You're really? kidding. No, it was it was part of gym class, was line dancing. And you mom. had to line dance? Line dance. Did you do Were any do si doing? Yeah, there was all that. There was, it was all do si doing. That's just the only move. And I remember our gym teacher was like this short, really built dude. He was like a wrestler. And like he, he was really fat. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> no, but I, I remember him giving like calling out all the like the dance moves was like mm-hmm. hysterical because like he took it seriously like ironically mm-hmm. like did he make you do push ups if you didn't do line dancing? <laughs> but he was, like a, he was like a big intimidating dude, and then he would just be screaming these like <laughs> these stupid line dance calls. Now spin your partner round and round, yeah. maggots. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, that was middle school. So you are getting a little peek into Keith's life here? Yep, yeah. my, that was a that's flashback. what people tune in. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> In flashback to 2001. <laughs> Good times. Space All right. Odyssey. All right. So this opens in a church, and Bernard is like leading a prayer with his very small congregation. He's, 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 they're about to do the Eucharist, yo. And this is how ignorant I am on religion. I, my first note was at a church. Mass? Question <laughs> mark? <laughs> Yes, this would be a Catholic church, uh, since he's a priest. The way this is all being conducted is part of the Catholic Mass. Well, they have, like, the wine. Right. I noticed that. And the bread. And the Crackers. bread. Well, wafers. Yeah. Body of Christ. Uh, we're intercutting back and forth with this dude getting chased down the Paris city streets. You know what the best part of this is? His unibrow? Oh. Well, that's <laughs> I was like, cool. I was like that he is... like Bert from Sesame Street. <laughs> he does look like Bert from Sesame Street. And that also explains his paperclip collection. Yeah. <laughs> he yells at one point, no, and beams one of these white supremacists with a trash can <laughs> in the middle of the chase. It's awesome. I loved it. I was like, yeah, fuck these guys. Right. Which is something I yelled at my screen multiple times. <laughs> so this guy, does this guy have a name? I think he does. Bert. We'll call him Bert. Yeah. So Bert runs into this church, and this must be like his church because he's like his home church. Father Bernard, he knows like, Father help Bernard. me, like protect me. 
With and your these, six parishioners. Yeah, yeah, there's like hardly anybody in this church. And they're able to fend off these white supremacists by like kind of putting their arms yeah. up in the aisle. And the white supremacists are just like, oh, I can't go any further. Like, Well, I think it's that they, they respect the church. Well, I think it's that they res- – well, I think they respect all the white people in the church because they're assholes. Also, like you're not going to – you can't beat up this guy with like six witnesses around. Yeah. Yeah, I guess not. That's a problem. You let that foreign pig in here. Right. The guy is a person of color, and he's Mm -hmm. being chased by three white people, Mm -hmm. white supremacists, skinheads. But I didn't think they were all skinheads. Like, one of them is. One is a skinhead. On the special features on the DVD, I think they talk about, like, I think Gillian Horvath jokes that the dude, Iggy, who is the only dude with a shaved head, she's like, I don't think he really had a shaved head. It was more like a receding hairline. (laughs) But we couldn't ask everybody to cut their hair, like, shave their heads just for this one role. Uh, and so they were supposed to all be skinheads, but said the one guy looks like a greaser. Yeah, so it's yeah. like the token token skin skinhead, yeah. John Travolta. Yeah, but they're all pieces of garbage. Yes, absolutely. In, also, in their personal lives, also. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> this guy Damler saunters into the church, and, and he's, he's like, got "Hold like on, a leather coat, right?" And he's like, "Don't worry, Fida, I'll take care of this." So they're good boys. No, they're, they're not. Yeah. yeah. So. Uh, Bernard has like a little mini flashback, and this guy Damler is like an SS dude. Yeah. Oh shit! So he gets really scared. He knocks over the glass of wine. There's a crazy interesting story about the wine. David Abramowitz got into a big argument with the writer of the episode because the or the director of the episode because the director wanted it to be white wine that spells out. Right. And David because apparently Abramowitz wanted it to be red. They use white wine in instead like of red. Some parts Who of does? France. Yeah, in some parts of France. White is the traditional wine. And David's like, no, red reads better. It's obviously red. Then David, like, called the Archbishop of L.A. Yeah. And was to be like, hold on, like, I want to confirm this because I'm not Catholic. Like, it's red wine, right? And the Archbishop's like, uh-huh, it's red wine. They fucking fought and fought about this. And That's... the reason it kind of looks a little goofy, like, it looks, like, very saturated in the, the final shot is he filmed it with white wine and they went in and, like. Oh, really? Yeah, and corrected it and made it red. Wow. Yeah. That's insane. Uh-huh. That's crazy. That That's... is Really nuts. Yeah. yeah. The story's crazy, too. On the DVD, Abramowitz is like, we confirmed that it didn't matter. Like, sometimes it's red, sometimes it's white. So it's like, yeah. so if it doesn't matter, just use the red. It reads better. Like, that's yeah. that's now what this is about. Who's, like, that insistent on that? So, Mario. 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 I guess maybe at his church when he was growing up, they used white wine, and yeah. he was very insistent on this. Well, was his brother also his brother a priest? Was his brother, a brother priest. was a priest. So, so he was, like, all... Oh, because this is also the episode where they get into the fight about the priest having right. a gun, right? Right, yeah. which Ken Gord talked to us in our Chronicle about. Yeah. Right. Listen into that episode do it we'll wait all right so let's move on cut barge in the morning classic coffee scene coffee (laughs) mac is whistling coffee returns and he's making coffee this is vintage mac this might be mac's truest self (laughs) i think you're right in a robe whistling with a morning beverage with a cup of joe coffee and Anne it has this like fucking like stuck up look on her face (laughs) She's very it's sour. Too, it's too sweet. She doesn't want it. And she's like, you're reading over my shoulder. Which Could you was. not do that? Max being very clingy in this scene. I do have a thought about this Ooh. coffee being too sweet. So later in this episode, we find out that Anne is pregnant. So I was kind of curious, is the coffee not too sweet? Because Mac is like, I thought you liked it like this. I thought this was an excuse because you're not supposed to drink caffeine when you're pregnant. Oh, oh really? No. Yeah. And so this was her getting around like, oh, I, I can't tell Mac I'm pregnant or I don't know what to do yet, but I should not drink this coffee. That's a good so, observation. Yeah. Fair enough. I'm on board with that. Yeah. Maybe. Is also but she's just on edge the whole time. That's having obviously. somebody she, read over your shoulder, is that bad for the baby that is, that's also? Bad for the baby, that's yeah. real bad for the baby. Well, it depends <laughs> on what you're reading. Because the person reading over the shoulder gets some of the knowledge and that doesn't trip down to the baby. The baby. <laughs> yeah, this all checks out. Yeah. But yeah. anyway, Anne is not into that barge life. Hashtag barge life. So Max suggests like, hey, maybe we should go back to the stage. She does not want to do that. I don't know how long she's been in Paris. Yeah. I, mean, I don't know. I she has a lot of vacation that, time. Not that long. Can't have been yeah. that long. Right. But I don't know. Like, I, was... I like it here. I want to stay here longer. Yeah. Okay. Is she I like don't... doctoring here? How I don't think so. I think she's money. just like on vacation. Because mm. I think Max's theory is that she's just getting stir crazy because she's not working. Right. Yeah. I, I was also like, when did she find out she was pregnant? Like, how long has she known this? Well, what's the timeline on she the whole thing? She doesn't have a, a bump. No bump. No bump. Hashtag no bump. No bump. How, how long has Mac been gone? Two months, let's say? I don't know. I don't know. I don't think they ever say. They don't. Yeah, they really don't. But it had to have been a minute. At least. I would say we're looking three months tops. Two right? or three months, right. 
Yeah. And that's how long she's been pregnant or how long he's been gone? Maybe so, how long he's been gone. Yeah. So do you think she, like, got busy the night before Joe called her? Right. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. Oh, hey oh. Well, I get the impression she must have been getting busy, like, shortly after Mac died. Because that was, was, like, she said, part of, like, the grieving process. Right? What, yeah. That's one does. Yeah. What if it was Joe... What if it was Joe? <laughs> it's an old friend. Yeah. Yeah. That's she, really meant, good. she meant old he and was, aged. Not... He, he was really hitting on her. So, yeah. Hey, Mac, you mind if I uh, move in on that? I don't care. <laughs> Forever. Okay. Do whatever you want. It's a possibility. Oh, boy. All right. So, outside, we got Mac is going to get a newspaper for himself, I guess. That's the idea. Yeah, because Anne <laughs> won't let him read hers. Uh, so, he sees. Bernard sees him. Was, was this a chance encounter or is Bernard looking for him? I think he's looking for him. I think so, too. Also, what are the how? odds he has two chance encounters with two immortals in two days? Because he says Duncan McLeod. But how, how, is he, how does he know where to look for Mac? He's in the barge book. I guess he could be in the... I guess he could be. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like... All right, that does check out. George DeLue knows where to find him, right. too. And like, so well, that's because like, Mac has visited him before. Yeah. But like, I guess if he just thinks his old compatriots are yeah. in maybe, the area... Maybe he, he asks no, George... And George is like, bah, 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 bah. he lives on that boat. <laughs> you're, you're drifting into Waluigi here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm on a boat. They start chatting. Oh, actually, no. I have in my notes that George did confirm it was him. Oh, did he? Yeah. He's like, I wondered if it was, you know, your father was Duncan McLeod, but George confirmed it's you. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. There we go. Yep. So we talked to him. And also, cool callback because this guy, George yeah, Delu, is from that episode for Tomorrow We Die. And he's yeah. like some kind of weird mobster guy. <laughs> right. Yeah. Which very weird. doesn't come up. Uh, it kind of comes up. We'll get it there. It comes up in the sense that he has a bodyguard and is and hookers. prostitutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> also, hookers two episodes in a row. So yeah. This yeah. Lots of hookers. Great run of episodes. <laughs> <laughs> Max trying to, like, you know, throw him off the path or whatever. He's like, nah, not, not me, whatever. But he reveals who he is. He's like, I'm Bernard. And then we get a flashback to 1943 at a in rectory in Paris. Paris. So Mac is hanging out with a monk, and they have some radio equipment, and they're intercepting a German transmission about a courier that they're going to intercept. And then there's a knock on the door. And it's little Bernard. Right, and it's a like flurry of knocks. It's not yeah. like the special secret knock that they're supposed to do. It's not three knocks, then three more. Right. <laughs> In my notes, there's a typo. It says the code is 33 knocks <laughs> followed by three more knocks. <laughs> yeah, everyone's sitting there counting. It's the right, most listen. tense One, knocking. Two, three, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Can it gets you to start 32, over? And it's like it's a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a really long pause before the thirty-third knock. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, thank God. They let Bernard in, and then the monk's like, that wasn't the right knock. And then Mac, like, literally points his gun at the kid, <laughs> and it's like, you're going to get yourself killed one day by forgetting. And I was just like, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he's going to get himself killed by you right now. <laughs> like, I realize they're in, like, a tense life or death scenario here but i was just like mac is like threatening this little boy <laughs> yeah, don't point a gun at a child mac it's just bad form so bernard has warned that damler is on his way with a bunch of soldiers so we cut outside the soldiers have arrived and there's a buzz and mac sees damler so he's another immortal the costumes in this are great all the costumes are amazing the jacket mac is wearing is the tits it's delightful it's very good. Yeah. He looks like a total badass. Also, I was on the lookout for uh, swastikas because we know they're not allowed to be shown in Germany. I don't think. I found one oh. on a helmet. It's very a very quick shot, but I'm also, I can't remember in the script if it's part of like the cut. Although if it was cut, it would be the Euro minute. So they must have snuck a swastika in there a Se little bit. Secret swastika. Secret swastika. Mm. That's actually, mostly we just see the, the fact, eagle. That's what the SS stands for. Secret swastika. Secret swastika. <laughs> anyway. So, Damler interrogates the priest, whose name is Gulme, Gulliam, or Gulliam, 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 yeah. yeah, whatever. Terry Gilliam. Office. Terry <laughs> Gilliam. Terry yeah. Gilliam. He kind of looks like Jeffrey Tambor. Yeah, he does. He does, right? So did Father he get Tambor fired from this production <laughs> yeah, he did. as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> makes so sense. Father Tambor gets interrogated by Damler, and I guess he knows that they're intercepting yeah. radio signals or whatever. Why doesn't he just fucking kill all these? Are they like? not allowed to do that i don't think they're really allowed to they're fucking nazis i guess well he does later come back and threaten to do it yeah that's true 
He's like, I know it's you. I'm going to figure this out. Outside, Max unloading a wagon, and Tim and Damler kind of have like a little... This is really unconvincing loading also. <laughs> <laughs> well, the bag is huge, but also looks like it weighs like a pound. Yeah. Yeah, that's... All, it's like, what is in that? I mean, the answer is clearly like tissue paper, but right. like... So it looks like it's full grain or something. Yeah. yeah. They kind of threaten each other. Mm. Damler's I, like, actually, well, I liked the interaction. Yeah, this is cool. Because he's like, well, we'll see what the search turns up. And Max, like, you guys are good at keeping schedules, so like, you know... He's a, Just let me know like when and where. Well, like they're like, yeah, let's are we gonna fight? And he, yeah, you people are good with schedules. Yeah. I was like, Burn. All right, so in the rectory, the soldiers are kind of tearing the place apart looking for this radio. They can't find anything. But then Damler notices that like the base of the statue, like the plaque is a little crooked. It's like, aha. So he looks in there and there is no radio, which is this oh, is where they hit it. Because little Bernie Sanders saved the day. Right. That's right. What did he hide the radio under? I couldn't figure this out. It was looked it like coal. Was, was it, it coal? coal? It yeah. looked very too. It took too smooth to be coal. Yeah, that's I think why I was like, it was, it was, yeah, are I they like what that plums was. or something? Yeah. Like, also, what? hard, hard plums. Yeah. Did anyone scope Max face? When they're removing like the plaque on the statue, no. no. Oh my god, it's amazing. It? It's like it's like he's painfully holding in a fart. <laughs> like the <laughs> face he's making is so strained. <laughs> they had it's... lunch for beans that day. Lunch for beans. Lunch for... <laughs> yeah, the lunch for beans. So Damler gives up on his search. He's like, I'm going to come back later. They mm. leave, and then Bernard reveals in his wagon that he's hid yep. the radio under rocks, which does not seem like a safe place. No, like when he was like moving all the. Yeah. Rocks out of the way it's they like, look like really heavy yeah like it's like you're busting up this radio like all the knobs are gonna be cracked <laughs> the radio is like smashed <laughs> <laughs> nice job bernard there's something funny like mac calls bernard a little devil and he rubs his belly and he rubs his, but <laughs> he they, rubs cut, his belly. they cut they cut oh you little devil they cut to the priest's face after he says little devil and the priest is like mm, <laughs> i don't approve of that being a priest <laughs> little <laughs> devil <laughs> he used the d word also, when Demler leaves, he uses the ultimate German-Austrian saying, I'll be back. Does he say, I'll, I'll be, be back. back? He says, yep. I'll be back. That's good. <laughs> I'd like to think that was a call out, but it probably wasn't. All right. So we cut to, I guess, maybe like the next day. We're at this road outside of yeah, Paris. Whatever. like a motorcade or yeah, something. So I guess this is the this courier. Is the trap. Yeah. This is what they're going to intercept. So they, they string up like a cable and these two motorcycle Nazi dudes, they hit it. They go flying off. They get owned. That was pretty cool, I thought. Yeah. Gilly Norvath talks about on the DVD that, like, the French stunt people were, like, wild all over the place. Like, they wanted to use real glass all the time. Like, when they'd have to go through a window. They're like, don't use that bullshit fake glass. Like, we'll just do it and go to the hospital if we need it. What? Yeah, I don't know. Like, they were always, like, taking real hardcore falls. Like, they were like, yeah, they just drove their motorcycles into this cable and like they were just taking punches that's, crazy. that's insane yeah. that's literally crazy they apparently prided themselves quite a bit on that mm. maybe well, it's also because they were drinking wine constantly <laughs> yeah that would probably help yeah uh so he's having a conversation with who we f- find out is george right the he's young like a little george. older he's already a little rough and tumble he's all about killing those nazis and he asked matt how many men he's killed there's another little callback to yeah. the previous episode he's like too many yeah that's good I, yeah i like that they're putting a thread through all these episodes it's cool yeah. This uh, ambush takes place. The motorcycle guys fall off. They then hide themselves under hay, and there are various funny shots of the people, especially Mac, covering himself in hay <laughs> to like, hide themselves. They're just like, they're super quick. And they're very funny. It's good. So there's like lots of machine gun fire. I think this is all really cool. They shoot the shit out of these Nazis. Yeah. It's awesome. But in the course of this, Mac gets like shot in the gut. He gets yeah. tagged. Or in the chest. Chest, yeah. He realizes, I guess, he's going to die. And so he like runs Tries off. Tries to run away, So yeah. he can do his thing in peace. But Bernard sees him. Right. When Mac sobs yells over his body. at Bernard to like stay where he is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's intense. It's like too intense he needs yeah. to dial that shit down also it's a child like so there's a child gonna be like i saw mac get shot in the chest and he's like stay back <laughs> yeah and so, then he like muzzles him yeah well, so after mac dies bernard like shakes him also apparently the director was like bernard screw this this bernard this is his only imdb credit <laughs> just funny because he was uh like uh, mortified by yeah. the director the right oh i thought he was in a christmas story <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right uh... <laughs> so the director was like you need uh, to scream like this is the most horrifying thing in your whole life. Like a scream you've never let out before when Mac wakes up. And the scream this kid lets out when Mac wakes up, he goes, ah! <laughs> it's like, that's it. <laughs> He's what a charmed life to now. Yeah. Oh, you're alive. I have to tell the others what I saw. Yeah. So then Mac like, yeah, why? muzzles him and like, this is intense too. You have to swear. Yes. Swear to me. <laughs> Where are the drugs? <laughs> I don't know, Mr. McCoy. 
about? So then yeah. we get a cool kind of transition. I don't know if they've ever done a transition like this before, have they? Where like little Bernard oh, changes yeah. into it's old pretty Bernard. Cool. Yeah. yeah, it is good. Uh, they even had a lot of characters that are like young in the past and then we see them old. Not many. Yeah. It, there's only a few, but like the old works. woman from uh oh, yeah. for Vendetta with Gregor and oh. Studies in Light. Studies in Light. Bernard tells Mac that he saw Damler and he's like rehashing yeah. all this shit. He's like training brown shirts again. Which felt like an anachronism to me, but cuz uh the brown shirts were like gone before World War II. Yeah. I had a note here. This is like a very prescient episode <laughs> well yeah that, that's my next note i was like this episode is like kind of hitting a little close to home right now this is weird yeah like Where's... there are lots of nazis right now yeah that's yeah. weird where's our duncan mcleod i could watch duncan mcleod fight nazis forever <laughs> like what's the episode with amanda that's like mostly a flashback the return of amanda the return of amanda yeah that's amazing and again mac fighting nazis i'm like sign me up for more please yeah, yeah. it's deeply deeply satisfying yeah this is i don't know this episode really did strike a little too close it's to weird home. Also, i i didn't know like i remember like nazis are a typical bad guy in like film less tv i guess more film because they're like period pieces but yeah like i remember as a kid watching stuff with nazis and being like oh yeah kill the nazis like th- in some way they still seem like a fantasy villain like like, there are no Nazis, even though they're, like, I was aware that, like, there were white supremacists when I was younger, but it feels different now. Like, there is a very public white supremacist movement. Movement, yeah. Like, yeah. they have they, big rallies, and they're terrible. And it's, like, it's, I don't know, it's very strange. And there's the shit that went down in Charlottesville, and <laughs> et cetera, it's, and doing roof, and all that. It's not good. So, we cut into the barge, and Mac is having a conversation with Anne. I think we should play this clip and then talk about what's kind of going on here. So you don't have to fight him, right? Not unless I'm challenged. Oh, well, good. Then it's settled. No, it's not settled. Ugh, Duncan. What am I missing? Fifty years ago, Daimler was a murderer. If he still is, I have to stop him. Why? Is it your job? Two hundred years ago, Edmund Burke said the only thing necessary for evil to triumph was for good men to do nothing. That still applies. Is Daimler still evil? Fifty years ago, I would have fought him. Why didn't you? Because he disappeared. I haven't heard of him since. I thought someone else would have taken him. Now? Now it's 50 years later. What? Yeah, let's get into this. What, what's? You guys seem troubled by this. I, I have no issues. Go on. The only thing that puzzles me is his comment, well, now it's 50 years later. I, I have a couple, very small point, when Anne is like, do you have to fight him? And Mac is like, not unless he challenges me. So just like Mac's kind of odd code of like, I guess if he gets challenged, he'll fight no matter what or whatever. I, guess. I mean, that's a kind of his thing. Yeah, it's like it if, is. People, if people call him out, he'll, he'll show. I don't necessarily have a problem with it. It's just an interesting bit of dialogue. But mm. my biggest thing is like Mac says, if he's still killing people, I got to see if he's still killing people and then I'll fight him. It's like he was a fucking Nazi 50 years ago. Like what? Like, fight him. Like, I have no idea why oh, this... You're, you're The thing that's upsetting you is he's not amped to kill this guy? Yeah. Like, I don't understand what the deal is. Like, uh, Kieran, or Cage... Right. He was pretty much like, yeah, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. Yeah, that's actually a fair point. All right. I'm more on board with this now. Because I'm going to go out on a limb and say being an SS officer is worse than being Cage. Yeah. Yeah. Just going to go ahead and say it. Because and Cage was like a drug runner guy well i guess they alluded to other things he might have done cage was a bad dude but i don't know if he was like into like genocide yeah Yeah. well he left those kids to die and he's still also a current white supremacist right it's like you know if i was mac i was like all right i'm fighting you for being a white supremacist like that's in and of itself that's enough right we don't need you running around with this bullshit yeah Uh, it's weird and like amen you brought up the point when we talked about cage that like well cage would still be tried for those crimes if he was immortal like right. that didn't happen that long ago same thing with this like every once in a while we find a nazi like, yeah wasn't there a nazi a couple years ago that was found in philly i thought yeah like in north philly somewhere they were like oh shit this guy was a nazi mm-hmm. going to jail yeah <laughs> like, yeah like there are people that hunt nazis today yeah and try to bring them to justice yeah yeah also i feel like the other slight wrinkle there is like cage also appears old enough you could believably still try him for that stuff 
Right. You know what I mean? Despite his immortality, because he looks just like an older man. Yeah, you couldn't right. get away with charging Damler because no, no one would believe it. It's like, this guy looks like he's 34. Right. Yeah. So Mac point. Mac does, in this case, need to be the judge yeah. and jury and all that stuff. Right, because right, he can't be held to account. Also, we'll see, mechanisms. in the next episode, Mac makes a judgment to kill somebody, and it's like, when you Whoa. put these two next to the each next other... The next episode? <laughs> we're going to have a lot to talk yeah, about. We will. Yeah. But yeah, Mac's reluctance to kill the nazi is strange and even Anne's like i guess it's because they want Anne to be on a journey in this episode because at the end she like well wants... she also just doesn't want him to go get into a sword fight right, with right. someone like yeah. regardless of sure you, you but know. We're, we're like confronted with like nazis the most cookie cutter sort of like oh they're bad like oh you mean like the most evil people in yeah history? like they're the, the stand-in for nazis. like we need a bad guy like what's a good example of that a nazi that's the go-to and Anne's like what do you have to fight him for he's a nazi Anne. yeah I just don't understand his comment, oh, well, now it's 50 years later. Is he just saying, like, nothing's changed and I'm still going to go get him? Or, like, I I don't understand what that means. Well, I think he's just saying, like, now we find out. Like, now it's 50 years later. Yeah. Like, let's see. Because I I don't know. I mean, could you take this that he learned something from Cage? That's what I was just thinking. Uh, Like, you know, like, people do change. Like, maybe this guy, because he fell off the map. He doesn't know why he fell off the map. Right. Um, but he's like, you know, maybe this guy has been. Of course, we find out. But we found from not, Bernard that he's training brown shirts. So, yeah, that's true. Like, yeah. so he hasn't turned. He clearly hasn't turned over a new leaf. Yeah. So fuck this guy by all measures of the word. In okay. any way a person can be fucked, fuck this guy. <laughs> so then he goes into the, like the phone bank of the white supremacist headquarters. <laughs> the phone bank. <laughs> and the the music that plays during this whole scene is some of the kookiest music. Mm-hmm. And like the way it starts is. The, oh, the Nazi a, theme. The Nazi also, theme. it sounded like you were about to drift into the Beverly Hills Cop theme. Axel <laughs> <laughs> F. So Mac gets the buzz outside a Nazi headquarters here. He goes into like their weird office gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's like some some Nazis trying to like recruit someone over the phone. Yeah, it's like a Nazi telemarketer. The Nazi center. greaser is like, what if they take your job next, buddy? Yeah, they took her gerbs. They took her gerbs, and then somebody else is pumping some iron. That's Iggy. Iggy. Iggy Pop. So. I saw Iggy Pop at a concert. Uh, he opened for Pearl Jam, which I thought was really weird. yeah. Wow, that is that does seem like an odd mix. And I was in eighth grade, and he kept on calling the audience cocksuckers. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like kind of a sheltered child. So in eighth grade, hearing Iggy Pop, just seeing Iggy Pop freaked me out. And then having <laughs> having us call us cocksuckers, cocksuckers. really uh, like made me not happy. Because <laughs> you don't suck cocks? Is I that why? I just, or because it hit too close to home? <laughs> I'd never heard anybody call me that before. <laughs> <laughs> you never forget your first. Even flow. <laughs> That's Iggy Pop's song, right? Yeah. That's, that's right. what he's known for. Anyway. So Mac busts up in the house. Busts up in the house. I was so pumped for a karate fight here, and then yeah. it doesn't happen. Doesn't no, happen. but but later. Stay, hang on to your butts, because yeah. it's happening. So then Damler comes in, and he's like, let's go talk in my office or whatever. Mac like picks up like this white power fucking poster that he's got printed out. Like There's all this like white supremacist propaganda. Again, walls, everywhere, right? yeah. Which also, he has a very odd interaction with Iggy Pop here. Did anyone clock this? Because it's very strange. It's the one where he says a weird foreign language. Oh, he says, and then says Mensano that, in Capore Sano. Capore Sano. So he's sound mind and a sound, sound body. body. You're halfway there. So, I so think he's, he's just like calling an him idiot, an idiot. An idiot, right? Yeah. What a convoluted thing. Like, yep. that feels like so shoehorned into this. <laughs> like, somebody thought that was a good burn. It's not. Right. And we're like, we're putting it in. Burn. We're putting it in. Anyway, sorry. I don't know. Like, it was just an odd moment I wanted to call out. So they're in Damler's office having a little chit chat about how Damler is, he's an evolved white supremacist now. Well, he's like, oh, after the war, like, now we can peacefully coexist. Like, you've allowed me to do this now peacefully, which is like, what? Like, also, he's not peaceful. As we, we come that. to find yeah. out. Yeah. You know, his whole thing is like, I'm operating within the political system that exists. Right. I'm, I'm a part of the system, which, ugh. But Max seems to sort of, I don't know, by it's the wrong term, but he's like, well, all right, fair enough. He's like, I just want a movement based on purity. Is that so wrong? And it's like, yes, yes, it, yes is. it is. And Mac is like, I'm not here to like argue ideology. It's like, why not? Like, I don't know how Mac is not more upset. Like, all he cares about, he's like, you're not going to go after Bernard, are you? It's like, do whatever else. Like, why doesn't Mac want to get involved? I don't know. I do agree that 
absent him being a Nazi, let's take that off the table. Because I agree that that's right. That's probably should be a throwdown no matter what. But just meeting a white supremacist immortal, I don't think would be consistent with Mac's character to fight. Like, absent them doing something. You know what I mean? Like, Mac doesn't seem like he's someone who fights people for their political views and racial views. Like, that doesn't seem like something he does. I don't know. Maybe, maybe it but is. I don't know. What about, like, Mac was, like, running slaves and stuff? I'm not saying he doesn't, like, take up causes. Yeah. I'm just saying, like, he didn't fight, what's his face, Desiree? Lucas Desiree. Lucas Desiree was, like, his friend who was, like, a Confederate officer. Like, he was obviously on the wrong traitorous slave holding side of that one and yep. that wasn't disqualifying he's not like we have to fight because you're confederate he's embracing more i don't know accepting that people disagree i guess as long as they haven't right. done something that he's privy to that is a wrong but fuck this guy mac should fight him <laughs> for being a white supremacist there we go to them mac is basically like Lay off Bernard. Damler's kind of like, yeah, Bernard's not sending you after me because of what I am. He's sending you after me because of his guilt. Right. And yeah. Mac's like, what? And he's Bernard? like, you should ask him yourself. Which is curious. Right. So then we cut outside to like the church courtyard, and Mac is confronting Bernard about all of this. And so then we get a flashback back to World War II. Bernard's in the garden, like, just kind of poking some dirt. He's not really yeah. helping out at all. With a two-pronged pitchfork. Yep. I don't know why I wrote down that it was two prongs, but... I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Good. Good attention it to It was detail. striking. Where's that third prong? You're yeah. the two prongs of this podcast. Which one of us is not included? Me. Are we the prongs? Oh, you, okay. And we're not you as too. effective without the third prong. Because I didn't write about the number of prongs. That's right. I don't know. <laughs> this all checks out. Okay. Yep. So, this is gold. Damler gold. shows back up to this town. Yeah. And he's going to start, like, picking off people because he's like, I know about the ambush. I know. I don't know how you fucking figured this out, where yeah. the radio is, but you did. So tell yes, me, Father Jeffrey, Jeffrey Tambor. Tambor. <laughs> uh, Who won't? He's and like, he won't. Fada. So then he's like, Hello, I'm just going to start picking off all these priests and townspeople until you do. You have an hour, and then I kill ten people, I think he says, something like Correct. that. Correct. And he's like, well, we'll see what happens when I start actually killing people. Right. So Bernard is and like Bernie antsy. Sanders is enraged. He just fucking stabs him in the gut. <laughs> he does. With both prongs. <laughs> and... What is, and what does he do with after this two-prong attack? He goes, <laughs> he goes, he goes, <laughs> he like and he slowly, slowly pulls, it. pulls it out. I was like, this is awesome. It is awesome. <laughs> it's, it's and it, like, once again, this gunfight is cool. I guess the resistance people are nearby, and they Luckily. Well, like they're all hiding. I guess, yeah, and they all pop out and just shoot everyone. <laughs> yeah, they murk these Nazis. Apparently, Adrian Paul had a problem with the amount of gun violence in this episode. Was oh, like, really? I think this is a bit much, and they were like. We think it's necessary because this is World War II and yada, yada, yada. Wait. Because it's a show that really... Paul's taking a stand on gun violence? What, uh, why? Did he just think there was just, like, mechanically was too much? Or was it a problem with the actual, like, level of gun violence? I think it was a problem with the level of gun violence. That's strange. Interesting. That is strange. I mean, it's a show that actually, like, it made me think, like, oh, yeah, this show does not really almost ever have guns. Like... That's not true. They're really? Guns it has guns all, all the, the time. time. Does it really? Yeah. Literally. In the episode <laughs> with Kristoff, we just talked about... There are guns everywhere. Mac gets somebody to Uzi a friend. Oh, that's like right. All right. There are a lot of guns. There's guns. All right. This does constantly. have a lot more guns, though, right? Guns, guns, guns. There, there is a lot of guns in this episode. It's just yeah. because Mac doesn't kung fu take the guns away from everybody that has them in this episode. <laughs> style. And he's kind of like, oh. <laughs> he's, Steven Mac Ugh, he's an asshole, too. He's literally the worst. He's also fat. <laughs> oh boy oh boy yeah anyway. so all these nazis get fucked up right. and then they're freaking out they're like oh they're gonna come back now and kill all of us because we killed all these nazis right so then georgie laforgi is like we're gonna hide the bodies right so then we cut to later by like a river like a raging river and yeah. they've got like bodies all chained up in bags and they're gonna yeah. dispose of them and bernie is very upset about this he's like i didn't mean to kill him like right. i just reacted and george is like why not? You did great, kid. Yeah. yeah. Way to go. I kind of like, I like this relationship. Like, Bernard is like this innocent kid that got caught up in this, but like, George is like a seasoned freedom fighter. Do you really freedom fighter. need like the little boy to help with the disposing of the bodies, though? Yeah, <laughs> like, like, what is he doing in this? There are all these adults. can't lift these bodies. Men, monks there. Every hand counts. And maybe they're like teaching him. Yeah, yeah. I guess. Hey, this is what you do, kid. You're one of us now. Yeah. You've killed your first Nazi. You never forget your first. And. <laughs> 
you're like one of the the big kids now. Right. So fucking Damler wakes up in this bag, and this fucking <laughs> yeah. <plus garbled. laughs> he's Three. again just going. Nah. Yeah. Nah, nah, nah. He's like, oh, he doesn't want to growl. And and then uh, Bernard is freaking out too. He's like, ah, ah. I yeah. love all this. It's yeah. just like a lot of screaming. <laughs> yeah. And then he makes him dump him in the river. Right. Yeah, George he's like, is I like, I can't. That's like that's torture does he call it torture or murder or? he's like no one should die like yeah that. no one should die like that which i mean it's pretty harsh but like yep nazi, nazi. uh and it's definitely cold-blooded they kick him in the river and he's, then you hear him like screaming and, <laughs> and of course like we know that he's immortal so like yeah. the horror like it's a bad way to die but the horror of that for an immortal that must be like a nightmare yeah like being buried or trapped somewhere like that literally has to be the worst thing that could happen yeah and he's trapped there, we later find out, for 40 years. Yeah, which, you know. Is insane. <laughs> it is nuts, which I got to say, like, we're always talking about, like, how do these people get punished? What's the payment? Like, what do you do? I'm going to go ahead and say, like, being a Nazi is a hell of a thumb on the scale. Being drowned consistently for 40 years, that's like a biblical punishment. Yeah, like, that, yeah. that is like, <laughs> that seems like some ancient Greek shit. Yeah. That, I don't know, if there's anything that can, like, be a sufficient punishment, it's either that or nothing, I feel like. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Like, or, or, I mean, or death. Or but, death. I mean, short of being killed, that might be the only, like, balancing act. Right. So then we cut back to the present. I thought this transition was cool. I don't think we've seen something like this before. This story starts with Bernard telling Mac mm. the story. And then the it transition cuts to Mac. Mac. Yeah, this is awesome. Has been telling Anne the story. And she's like, oh, what a horrible story. I was like, this is really cool. Like, yeah. we managed to change scenes now. Yeah, that was a peach of a transition. Very cool. Peach? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> and upset by the story, understandably. Right. But Mac is like, oh, stop worrying. The past is in the past. Once again, the guy was a Nazi. The past is in the past. Come on. Like, I mean, Mac might even be thinking, like, okay, this guy's like suffering Oh, a lot. maybe. Like, yeah, because at this point, this he does know he's been punished. Yeah, it's way. like, if he's a peaceful person who's not actually going to hurt my friends, like, maybe I don't need to come back and judge, like... Yeah. So then he gets all Dude. frisky after this Nazi story. Yeah, like starts, anyone. Like, kissing her neck and shit. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, oh, stop it, stop it. And now we get the bombshell. Anne is pregnant. That was a lot of build up for that. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah, so she's pregnant, and Mac obviously knows it's not his. Right. Yeah, and he just kind of looks like dumbfounded yeah, he's for this like whole scene. Pretty shocked the whole time. And mopey. His like sh- lips are like, ooh. <laughs> What are they like? Ooh. Yeah. But it's a little cold-blooded. She's like, well, I guess the question is, what are you going to do? He's like, I don't know. <laughs> and she gets yeah. really upset and yeah. leaves. Which is like an understandable reaction. But, you know, he comes around on this whole thing. He eventually decides he like wants to be the baby's daddy. Baby daddy. Baby daddy. Also, did anyone notice my like Max outfit in this scene? He is wearing a like black t-shirt with a red pullover collar t-shirt. And a black leather vest. It's yep. really nice. There's a lot of layers. Yeah, yeah. A lot of layers. Well, I did say the costumes were great in this episode. I was actually only talking oh, about like- this. <laughs> <laughs> hey, rewatchers, we have a deal for you for the holiday season. You remember our amazing magnet set? Well, now you can get it cheaper than ever as it's going on sale for only $15 for each and every one of our collectible magnets. Eamon, can you tell us about this magnet set? Yes, uh, I designed these magnets. Uh, we have uh, magnets featuring Mac, a special flashback Scottish Mac, Mythos, Joe Dawson, and Amanda. And this handsome set of five could be a good Christmas gift for yourself or a loved one. Or Hanukkah. Or Kwanzaa, if you're one of the six people who celebrates Kwanzaa. <laughs> yeah. Or if you just want a present. Yeah. Yeah, you want to just treat yourself. Yeah. That's very important. For only $15, this collectible magnet set can be yours today. And That's you can like display the... it proudly on your fridge. That's like the cost of a lunch. Like a big yeah. lunch, but just it's lunch. Mm-hmm. Don't go, Stop going to Wawa. Just buy these magnets instead. You okay. can't eat them, but you can put things on your refrigerator. Kyle, what's a Wawa? <laughs> a Wawa is a <laughs> Pennsylvania area institution that is basically a convenience store that also sells hoagies which for people who aren't what, from around, Kyle, what's a hoagie <laughs> hoagies are what weirdo philadelphians call subs or, or a grinder food. no grinders are hot heroes oh. depends on where you're from <laughs> yeah speaking of hot heroes duncan mcclaff now we're back on track. track so get that sexy scotsman on your fridge today for only 15 dollars on etsy or our facebook page bye today <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
Uh, so we cut to George Delu's cafe, and George is there meeting with Bernard. We get a long cut of the prostitutes outside for yeah, some reason. There are like two scantily clad women out there, and it, is it just to remind us that like George is a criminal? Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. also, like it's kind of irrelevant because like but, if you didn't remember, if you never saw that episode before, especially in early '90s television, where like you certainly could have missed a number of episodes, you would just be like, "What is the deal with the prostitutes, <laughs> prostitutes. outside?" Like, yeah. They're just there, Ma- and it's kind of distracting. Mario as a party, prostitute enthusiast. <laughs> like, what's going on? As a party. Now it's a party. Uh, so Bernie Sanders is trying to convince George that this Nazi is back. back. And right. he's, of course, skeptical. And he's like, oh, you don't believe me? Then why don't you go talk to uh, McLeod? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, swear to me you'll do it. And he's like, okay, buddy, sure. All I really right. like the actor who plays George. Yeah, he's oh, really good. Oh, he's great. Good. Also yeah. crazy in For Tomorrow We Die, mm-hmm. which was his first episode, it's not his voice. He was dubbed in that episode. Oh, wow. But in this episode, it's his real voice. So huh. yeah. either they... Which I thought he had a great level of accent. He's like a good character. Like, I I yeah. liked him as an actor. Like, I could yeah. see him in other stuff and be like, yeah, like, yeah definitely. I'm into this guy. Too bad you won't see him anymore. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> oh, oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> After this, like some repeated flashbacks of Duncan telling other women who aren't Anne that he can't have kids. Right. Mac is near the river with Anne, and he's like, now he seems to be considering raising this child. And yeah. now we get these flashbacks. So the first is from Bless the Child, uh, well, and the flashback is Slapper. Right. In that like liquor closet they're yeah. hiding in or whatever. I didn't go back and check the tape. My memory is they removed whatever filter they had. It was had. in black and white before. Okay, and now, now it's, it's in, in color. color. Ooh. Yeah. Which, actually, like, there were nice colors in it. Yeah, there like, were. She's got like a bright blue dress. Yeah. Sharp. Like, that flashback's okay. And then we flash back to the sea witch. Mm-hmm. It's when cold. The yeah. sea, sea witch. And, uh, and Max talking to a sea witch. You could really go witch. for a sea witch. Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <boy>. Wow. <laughs> Harsh. And Tess is talking about how much she likes that little crack baby, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that little crack baby. Another sea witch. <laughs> the, le- the letter C. For crack. 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 Yeah, crack C's witch. for crack. The crack witch. <laughs> so I didn't need this. I no. didn't like it. It's eh. They're just padding that out, it padding that yeah, runtime out. I mean, I imagine this was a very expensive, this was like a budget buster of an episode, I'm sure. sure. Yeah. So but like, again, also, I, if you hadn't seen some of these episodes, this is good filler for how Mac feels about this situation. Right. If you don't remember these episodes or didn't see them. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, they don't include the clip of In the Line of Fire, where <laughs> like the guy hunts down the baby and oh. kidnaps the baby. Yeah. Because that's the other side of this coin. Mm-hmm. He's like, you know, like uh, this is my one chance to lead something akin to a normal life. Right. So, you know, I want to have this kid with you. Right. Which is very sweet. I was like, oh, Mac. It is. But again, always we always talk about like adoption. It's like this is the first time he's been confronted. Like, oh, maybe I could do it. It's like you could have always adopted or married a single mom. Um, or like, yeah, whatever. Like, there are many options for how you could have accomplished this, right. dude. Don't dude. be so literal about this whole thing. <laughs> but Aunt, Mac is worried that he's just gonna like one day he'll lose a fight and not be able to be there for Anne and the child. So heavy issues. Yeah, laying down. It was good stuff. Yeah. Heavy issues in an episode with Nazis. Yeah. yeah. Who would have thunk it? Yeah. Uh, so as they're hugging, Max sees George approaching. Uh, with he's his like, goon. I got to go talk with Georgie Poo. So then we cut to George's cafe. and It's pronounced Georgie Poo. Poo. <laughs> Poo. Oh, and this, this is where the hookers are outside. More hookers, yeah. <laughs> More hookers. <laughs> they're um, doing a good job. And so George is like, Bernard is being really weird. What's yeah. up with that? Max like, what do you think about him? And so George has a good line. He's like, I think the person I fought with in World War II would be like, honest with me and know that i could keep a secret to the grave and cradle to the grave right. which is a good pitch frankly yeah. it's like it's yeah. me george <laughs> yeah i was very on board with this whole thing yeah it's great and that's Unfortunately, a nice nice scene where they like hug and hug and this, this again, george great, sells it like this, george is like a, a fun guy. like he seems like a fun guy yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got all those prostitutes yeah, he uh, does they did a good job of making you care about him pretty quickly because we're about to he's about to be dispatched in a exceedingly brutal fashion oh, yeah. Jesus yeah and I don't know I was upset I cared a lot more about him than a lot of the people who've died on this show yeah also Bernard yeah I don't like Bernard sorry he's kind of a wiener yeah did you say I'm sorry? <laughs> yeah, <I did. laughs> you apologized. You, you casted Bernard yeah. and wrote all his lines. Yep. 
Oh, I didn't know you were this intimately involved with the yes. production. Were you the actor that played Bernard? I am. Oh, yeah. my goodness. <laughs> you really lost your accent. I have these glasses, though, still, though. We cut back to Anne and Mac or whatever on the barge, and Mac's convinced that the, the big problem is Bernard, not Damler anymore. He's like, we need to convince Bernard. The war is over. It's all in the past. So then we get this, like, intercutting, which is kind of cool, between the church and george's like apartment or house or whatever bernard is praying and there's like all these flashbacks like audio flashbacks of you know damler getting like drowned alive all this shit and george is just kind of hanging out drinking wine or whatever in his apartment yeah Yeah, this so there's a weird timing thing here but actually i think i kind of liked the way it played out this Uh, makes it seem like it's going on in tandem and it's not it's not right it's that bernard is kind of freaking out because he knows that george is dead Right. Which is what we see intercut with this. Damler comes to George's apartment and beats him to death with the chain that he was wrapped up in. Which is cool. Which is awesome. Yeah. And, like, it's brutal. You know, they don't show him getting hit, but they get these really intense shots of, like, Damler just wailing. It's it's rough. This it's is, hardcore. This is flinchy. Yeah. Yeah. Bad news. David Flinchy, my favorite director. <laughs> I was about to make that joke. <laughs> God damn it. Hey, Our ooh. plays become so predictable, guys. I know. So, just all on the same wavelength. Uh, all the time. We cut back to the church, and Bernard, he hears a noise, I guess, right? And he puts a pistol in his pocket. Mm-hmm. Which was, again, the... This, this is apparently a huge dispute. So the noise he hears is Mac coming in. And Mac is like, it's just me. Like, Bernard is freaking out over all this stuff. So at this point, did anyone think that this was like the twist of the episode, that Bernard was freaking out, that he was going to be killed but damler never had a beef with bernard because he was just a little kid it was george that was the one that was like drown him drown him yeah george uh, is the one that damler's always wanted I didn't not think bernard about that. I, I at this mm. moment i was like oh maybe that's like the little switcheroo not true we want to bernard like fucking stabbed him in the gut that's too. also true yeah yeah not exactly innocent in the whole thing though again nazi right <laughs> so Anne's here with mac and Mac is like, you guys stay here on Holy Ground. He cannot hurt you Which, on yeah. Holy Ground. So let's talk about this. Oh, We're yeah. We're always wondering about that, whether the rules apply to mortals. I guess they do. I don't know. I'm trying to think of instances. Did we see Xavier kill someone? I feel like somebody was killed. It was the episode with Grayson, Band of Brothers. Well, he- Gase- Grayson, I almost just said Gayson. <laughs> Grayson throws the knife and kills that dude. Yeah. Right. So that's a little iffy. He wasn't standing on Holy Ground. He threw it onto Holy Ground. Gr- but then y- in y- in on Holy y- Alliance, right? Isn't Part there, one or two. I, I can't remember. <laughs> Isn't there a scene in the mausoleum? Oh, McCla- Horton, Horton is like, I tried to convince Xavier to come here and do this, but he, even he won't break the rule. He's like, but I can. And does, does Max say he can't fight him here? Or I can't remember what happens when Horton and Mac are on Holy Ground together. Horton gets away, but I'm trying to remember why. Does he does he run out of the cemetery when Matt yeah. kills him? So he's off the cemetery ground. All right. Yeah. I thought immortals couldn't fight each other on holy ground, but it's apparently mortals can't do any Anything. type of violence on holy ground at all. Listeners write us in and tell us if there's he an does, instant. He does when... have a training thing with Kim Sung. On yeah. Well they're like but playing they're, around. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I yeah, I don't, know. I don't know. Listeners, write us in if there's an example that we've missed where an immortal does fight or a mortal. Ki- a mortal on holy ground. If not, then they've further established this as a rule. Yeah. Moving it doesn't forward. really make sense to me, but I'm fine with it. I guess it's just where I land. It's just I don't know, it's like vampires have weaknesses. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Although I do have some issues later because I'm not sure they leave holy ground. Because I'm like, where are they? Like, aren't they in the church courtyard? And is that not holy ground at the end of this? Oh, yeah. I was like, oh, That's I don't know. That's too. Yeah. They're actually just in a public park. Yeah. And there's like, you know, strict rules about church and state, so it's <laughs> not holy <laughs> ground anymore. Uh, so Mac is going to go after Damler. Anne is going to stay with Bernard and keep him calm and collected on holy ground. So this is all a trap. So Mac goes to the Nazi lair. Right. Like, because there's a phone call. Like, yeah. Mac very and- comfortable with the notion that Nazis have lairs. Yeah. yeah. It makes it sound like dragons yeah. <laughs> or other fantasy villains. Right. So Damler tells Iggy, he's like, make sure he waits for me. Like, yeah. I'm leaving. So the goons are going to take care of Mac. Damler's the moment the church. we've been waiting for all episode where he karate fights Nazis. And it mm-hmm. is every bit as satisfying as I knew it would be. Yeah. <laughs> right. This part's pretty awesome. So Mac shows up at Damler's place. And this might be one of my favorite fights 
This in, is great. Like hand to hand fights in the show. This is awesome. It's lit really well. Like I mean, like this whole episode is very dark. It's like very cinematic how dark it is. Like almost a little too dark, I think, sometimes. But uh it's cool. It's like really like kinetic and like it's rough yeah, and tough. It's good. At one point Mac does a Colossus yell. <laughs> Can he you goes, demonstrate? Bruh! <laughs> that was a good, that was a pretty good Colossus. Yeah, there's a nine... for, for people at home for the unwashed. This is from the the X Men the old X Men arcade the right. the mm-hmm. true quarter eater of mm-hmm. the nineties. X Men, welcome to die. Welcome <laughs> to die. That's right. X That's chicken. So Mac drinks from some random water bottle and like yeah. spills it all over Iggy's face and demands to know where Damler is. The church, duh. So in the church, basically, Damler's trying to get Bernard to leave. This is I love this interaction. The way he's like kind of manipulating him to get him Mm. off holy ground. This is kind of cool. Because yeah, Bernard's freaking out. He pulls the gun on him. He like kind of throws his faith back at him a little bit. You don't feel safe on holy ground priest or something like that. I thought that was interesting. He's like, you better run because like I'm definitely gonna get you. And it's like, what you think I won't kill you in a church? I've killed so many people. Mother, like. Call back to that last episode again. Mothers with babies in their arms. Yeah. Like, all this shit. It's like, you think I won't come for right. you? And that spooks him, so he leaves. Yeah. Which is great. And he drops the gun. Well, yeah, like he doubles in. down. What he is like, that? He throws the gun away, and he runs away. So I think the idea bet- like with him throwing the gun away is like him d- confronting his past. Like, Bernard is not a killer, no right. matter what. Like, that's why he's a priest now. He's a peaceful guy. So I think that's part of him getting rid of the gun. It's like, I don't want to ever do that again. Even though it's kind of a dumb move. Yeah, it's a real dumb move. He should hold onto that gun and shoot Damler outside. Yep. Checks out. Yep. So Bernard runs and runs after him. So then Damler follows them into, like, the courtyard and shoots the shit out of Bernard after smacking Anne, like, across the face. Brutal. Yeah, this is is a violent episode. And she goes flying. Yeah. Yeah. When he shoots Bernard, too, like, this is, like, intense. Like, he just walks straight up to him and he's just like, pop, pop, pop. It's like, shit. This is brutal. This is brutal. But then Mac arrives too late, unfortunately. Yeah. And it's go time. This place. Also, it, hold on. Mac arrives. How does Mac arrive? From like out of like he seems to he just leap. Appears. He like leaps maybe off a statue. Like there's the buzz <laughs> and he like jump. He like jumps into frame. He's continuing his uh, X Men arcade impression and he's teleporting in. Yeah. Like uh, Nightcrawler. Like he's just there. Like <laughs> bub. So he, they tackle each or he tackles yeah. him and his hood is up. Yeah, Did he's like got like a hoodie. Like I think that. it was a stunt person or something. Right. <laughs> hoodie yeah the hoodie's a little jarring yeah about this whole thing but it works and so Anne's on the ground she's crying and she's worried about the baby of course yeah. right and max like oh i'm gonna kill you yeah Anne, well Anne's like kill him yeah, yeah this is fucking intense yeah and i like when damler like pulls his sword up and he's like highlander yeah i thought that was pretty cool yeah this, 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 this show is episode... served well by screaming like anytime yeah. people scream it's cool well, it's, it's it's this show is served well by like amped up emotional content yeah and i feel yeah. like they often run from like episodes that center on that mm-hmm. and this is great because it's like very action heavy it's very emotion heavy i often feel like they just need to like turn it up to 11 yeah this episode yeah. if nothing else Turns it up to 11, like... Well, also, like, I think the emotional content, like, can help fill in, like, the gaps. Like, it's like, hey, like, when the special effects budget's not so great, or even when the sword fight is, like... In this case, I like the sword fight. It's fun. This yeah. is another, like, rough and tough. Like, it's not a lot of flashy moves. It's also very dark, so it's kind of hard to see what's happening all the time. But it's just, like, these guys are just, like, trying to fuck each other up. Yeah. Or, you believe more than in almost any other episode that these yeah. guys want to kill yeah, each like, other. Yeah, like, you don't like... need a Duende-level of choreography to like get a lot of like juice out of what's going on yeah it's like the emotional content fills it in i guess i mean we've all seen return of the jedi like that's why it's amazing it's like that fight scene is not great because like their lightsaber moves are like look like a kung fu movie like in the prequels it's great because like mark hamill's freaking the fuck out yeah Yeah. like or like courage fighting his dad sword fight where it's like hardly a sword fight it's like flailing around stabbing each other but it's amazing because there's all this like emotional buy-in so yeah yeah, yeah. go on this show to mac wins <laughs> yeah right also well, like he wh- stabs him like down through the chat like this is again a this is a fucking this might be one of the most violent episodes of the show we've seen yeah, yeah. so two quick call outs for this fight one they did the ultimate stage throw where like someone rolls onto their back oh, yeah. and kicks uh, yeah. their leg up, <laughs> yeah. which I just thought that was funny. I was like, hey, I remember doing that <laughs> like in an eighth grade play. <laughs> uh, and then the other thing was we didn't call out at one point 
that Mac was like playing with a knife when he was in Damler's office. Right. Oh yeah. That was on Damler's desk. It's an SS like, knife. It's, yeah. What does it say? My honor is my fidelity. I believe. Anyway, I was like, oh, it's Chekhov's knife because that comes back. Right. And, yeah. Like at some point, Mac gets stabbed. Like it seems like Mac might lose this fight mm. at various points. But of course, he's our hero. He's not going to lose to a fucking Nazi. Nope. That might actually be the darkest timeline. A timeline where Matt gets killed by a Nazi. Yeah. <laughs> There's a secret knife in the next episode, too. Lots of hidden That's, knives. Yeah. yeah, interesting. But this is great. Yeah. Mac takes him awesome. downtown and gets treated to her first quickening. So what do we think of this quickening? I liked it. It's not my favorite. Like I like the statues blowing up. Yeah, I like that, too. All the other stuff is fine. Whatever. I thought Anne did a great job of like looking freaked out, witnessing this weird alien thing yeah. lightning storm yeah that like no human should have to witness right. like i liked that like that she's like shit yeah this is what i'm getting myself right. like involved in and max like holding his head the whole time like the dark quickening idea or whatever where like he's like seems like he's in more pain than usual after receiving this quickening right and i feel like the sounds like they're like almost like war sounds or chanting or something there is was, this like the nazi stuff like invading his brain there or was something? A, that just suddenly becomes a white supremacist <laughs> after yeah. this he starts saying things like i'm not racist but I'm not racist, <laughs> he has a but. like in the next episode Episode makes subtle references to black on black crime, and you're like, I don't know, oh Mac. God. Are you sure that Nazi didn't change you? He, he starts following Tommy Laren on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so there was a whole second half to this quickening that was cut. The producers were like, No, 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 no. So the reason he's holding his head, like after this is all goes down, and like holds Mac, and Mac has like a freak out moment, and he has like all these flashbacks to World War II stuff. Oh, and. The writers and producers were like, that doesn't work. First off, they were like, he would have a lot more memories than just World War II. So right. we can't film all that. But also, the memories don't transfer. Oh. Like, that, that, was a th- that was a decision. That yeah. was a decision. They're like, mm. he doesn't get his memories. So Interesting. No. Which makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So they just like cut it short. Mm. Uh, yeah. But that's why he's holding his head, was that was part of it. Interesting. So, but I think that's a neat, yeah. creatively, and interesting thing to do. Cool stuff. Right. So, the denouement of this episode, we cut to the hospital. Uh, Baby's Mac, fine. And the baby is good to go. <laughs> and it's a girl. Right. Guys, how is Babby formed? Babby? Have you never seen that? No. Oh, it's like the stuff of internet legend. It's like a Yahoo like chat board. Mm-hmm. And somebody asked the question, <laughs> how is oh, ba- I remember the, How is Babby <laughs> formed? How do they how spell girl- Babby? B A B B Y B B Y, and then how girl get misspelling of pregnant, and then Very the follow up to it is amazing, <laughs> where someone says the following: They must do way with insane mother who kill her baby because <laughs> baby can't fight back. <laughs> what? <laughs> you, I can't believe you've never seen this. No, it's amazing. Oh man! I All right, everyone, up. go look it up. Yeah. Just Google how is Babby formed. <laughs> how y'all. is Babby formed? <laughs> Which also led to a lot of jokes because the new tr- presumptive Czech m- prime minister is named Andrej Babis, oh. <laughs> and that led to a lot of how is Babis formed. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so speaking of Babbies, the Czech Donald Trump, he's a so, real piece of shit. Oh, man is like, I think I should go back to the states, and Max is like, okay, we'll go. Like that's fine. And Anne's like, I think I should go alone. Uh, and then Mac finds some way to flip this shit on Anne, I think. He's like, yeah. he's like, well, the baby's fine. And like, you knew what I was. So like, yeah, it's like, hold on. Don't turn this around. Like, why? Well, I, I mean, I think he's, it's not like turn around, but she's changed her mind. He's calling her out for changing her mind. Like, yeah. Correct. But he seems like, like, come on. Like, I thought, you know, we've already gone over this. Like, it's fine. Right. I don't know. I mean, what is he supposed to say? I guess so. But yeah. Anne has changed her mind. I agree. Because this is fucked. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think it's also a really interesting reason she changes. Yeah, I thought that was compelling. Because it, it didn't have to do with, like, the violence Mac has brought. It's like, it changed her. Like, she's like, I save people, but I was like, kill him. Like, I wanted him dead, and that's not who I want to be. Yeah. Right. Which she's theoretically going to be doing that. I mean, obviously, this guy is particularly evil and, like, impacted her right. Right. directly. But Mac's going to go fight other people. And insofar as she wants him to come home alive, she is rooting for him to behead that person right. effectively. And this yeah. also parallels nicely Bernard's journey because I think Bernard did not want to be a killer either. And Anne is in the same boat Bernard was. Yes. Like, she has had this one instance now change her. Kind of like he did. It's like this moment of truth that he's spending his life trying to rebuild from. Yeah. And so that's uh, that's it. There's a sweet 
shot of them hugging, and it's a sad, a bittersweet end of the episode. Mac looks Goodbye, very Aunt. sad. Mac, yeah, Mac. I think Adrian Paul does a good job in this episode. He does. Of, I give him. I maybe like leaned in a little hard where it was like oh, I flipped it on Anne. Like mm. I think Mac's reactions or Adrian's reactions this whole episode have been fairly like he didn't overreact to stuff. Like he yeah. was just kind of like uh, like a lot of his acting has just been like I don't know what to do. Like, yeah, which give I think is pretty rub. real. Give me some rum. Good God. Yeah, he's so much subtler in this than that. This is Which is I- good because this is such an emotionally heavy episode that you needed some quieter moments. Like, obviously, there's a lot of heavy emotion in those moments, but at least he's not yelling and freaking out. We get a lot of that elsewhere. So, guys, how about we listen to a little behind-the-scenes clip with Ken Gord and David Abramowitz about shooting this episode with Mario. It's-a me. Yeah, Mortal Sins was, was a kind of... Um, a firecracker of a show. Mario is a firecracker of a director. He's one of the best. He knows how to tell a story as good as anybody. But he's also very opinionated. He's very, he's strong. He's a, he's a big personality. I think Mario as a party is a great director. He's also a major pain in the ass. Um, we fought incredibly um, on a, over a number of things. So I think he did, a, he did a wonderful job. This episode cut and paced and worked just from an episode standpoint. As, as good as, as anything we'd ever done. And it looked great. The production values were wonderful. But we had this major fight. He uh, really took offense to uh, a priest in the church having a gun. He and I were on the phone with uh, David and conversations became pretty loud and they became pretty rough. You know, there was threats back and forth and it was quite actually intense. And um, Mario's brother's a, a priest in, in Malta and he was really, you know, didn't want to uh, offend his brother, and he didn't want to inf- offend the church, and uh, David just wanted to tell the story. There was a scene where um, the, the priest is at the, at the altar, and um, by the altar there's a glass of communion wine. And, I, and when, when there's a sequence that happens, the wine spills, it's symbolic, I wanted it to be red wine. He said, no, it's definitely white wine. Well, white wine doesn't show like red wine shows, you know? Red wine's like blood, it plays better dramatically. I didn't think it was a big deal, and he freaked out. And I, then I got pissed, and I said, listen, it's going to be red wine. He said, no, no, no. And then I called up the Catholic Archdiocese in Los Angeles, and they said it was red wine. And well, then in some diocese in France, it was actually white wine. So I said, who cares what it is? Let's do what looks better. But he got this bug up his ass, and we fought and fought and fought and fought and fought. And to tell you the truth, in the moment, I don't remember whether it was red wine or white wine. I would work with Mario again in a minute, crazy or not, and we could fight again, you know, because um, the bottom line is the episode really worked. Oh, boy. That's all interesting. Also, I can't believe they bleeped the word ass. <laughs> I feel like they've cursed on these before. They definitely have. Maybe right? that'll be funny. Yeah, I guess. Or maybe he doesn't say ass. He's a real pain in the fuck. That's <laughs> what he said. <laughs> um, that's all pretty interesting. Yeah. Also, I had to contain my laughter when he used the phrase Mario Brothers. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Mario Brothers. Well, guys, how about we learn a little bit about Ernst Damler and his Watcher Chronicle? All right, so. Base of operations. <laughs> right. Nazi town. <laughs> <laughs> Nazi town. Courtney Cox. All right. He was born, Henrik Benz, in 1841 in Stettin, Prussia. His first death was in 1866, and he was shot by uh, his own lieutenant while invading Austria. Hmm. Huh. His first teacher was Paul von Leto Vorbeck. Leto? Maybe a reference? Hmm. Original cultural affiliation? Prussian. Recent base of operations? Paris, France. This guy deserves a, recent, an op- a base yeah, of operations. Yeah, this is like one of the few who actually yeah. has a base. Yep. Uh, his occupation, founder, youth for purity. Maybe it's just about water. Yeah. It's just, yeah, <laughs> right they, they just want pure water. All right, so this is from his Watcher Chronicle. In the 10 years since a fishing boat dislodged him from the bottom of the Seine, Ernst Damler has become a driving force in European politics. He is a youth for purity, or YP, movement. Started in 1988 with a few hundred francs and a mimeograph. Uh, has grown into a multinational coalition with offices in every major city in Europe and plans to expand throughout the U.S. Damler's military background and Prussian upbringing have brought discipline and order into chaotic, wasted lives. And many of the formerly alienated young men and women touched by the movement thrive on it. 
YP has taken a generation of disaffected youth, poor, unemployed, with no ambition or hope for the future, and given them a voice in how they're governed, a cause to believe in, and the power to affect change. Ernst Damler knows better than many that if you give people something to unite them and a cause worth fighting for, they can change the world. This is written by someone that sounds like, like they are... Oddly sympathetic right? to this Nazi. A cause worth fighting for. Right? Weird. Yeah, this person Weird. seems like they maybe joined the ranks. Yeah. yeah. Maybe that's how the Watcher got all their deets. Yeah. Watch your deets. Watch your deets by being a Nazi. The Watcher tattoo is the least offensive of their tattoos, undoubtedly. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> how we play a little game, guys? Game time. <laughs> What, what, what time is it? Game time. The game. All right, guys. So we are going to play a little Name That Episode. So Ooh. I'm going to be playing some audio clips from episodes, and you need to name what episode they come from. Oh, we haven't played this, this in a while. This has been a little while. This has been, been a, it's been a while. Fun. Okay. So, Kyle, how about we start with you, okay? Be you're up first, then Eamon's going to be up. Then you're up, then Eamon, right? Okie dokie. Okay, ready? Smokey. You ready? Smokey. Okie dokie, Smokey. Supreme Leader Snoke. <laughs> that's yeah, right. that's it. <laughs> Supreme, Supreme Leader, Leader Snoke. Snoke. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Kyle, round one. Ready? Hit me. Doing 90 down the I-5 on top of 1,200 cc's aboard out Harley. The Lamb. You actually got that right. Wow. Yeah, that. damn straight I did. It's like they're arguing over what, what you spend money on, a boat or a, <laughs> <laughs> or a motorcycle. Very good. Excellent work. Eamon, what episode is this from? Mm, you learn quickly. Maybe you have a samurai spirit after all. This game again. <laughs> the samurai. Hi oh, correct. Good work, Gaiman. How'd you get that? I don't know. It's Lucky. It's cold. The sea witch. <laughs> all right, Kyle, round two. These might get harder. We'll see. They might? Yeah, really? Harder than that last one? <laughs> yeah. Look at me. I'm growing mold. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm growing mold. Um, Would you like to hear it again? <laughs> yes. Okay. Look at me, I'm growing mole. So that's Joe, right? Yes. Are we even trying to give hints here? I'm going to guess it's the <laughs> Cross of St. Antoine. Ooh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that is not correct. That is from Line of Fire. Yeah. Ah, uh, very Can good. we hear it one more time? Yeah, let's hear it one more time. Okay, I think it'll this become is, apparent. This will become apparent Look now. Look at me, I'm growing mole. Oh. Yeah. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> this all checks out. All right, Eamon, what episode is this from? As his curator, I know as much about the Cross of St. Antoine as anyone. <laughs> oh, what is this? The Cross of St. Antoine? <laughs> That's correct. I just want to say, yes. Keith has rigged this game, but... No, I haven't. These are random. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> totally <laughs> random. In a way, if I don't get <laughs> I the answer right, I'm, like, worse than Damler. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Worse than a Nazi. That's right. All right, Kyle, what do you think this one is? Okay, I'll see you around four. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Obsession. Ooh, that's from Shadows. Uh, oh, who knows? Yeah, the Shadows knows. <laughs> <laughs> and Eamon, the final one for you. Oh, Ooh. Eamon already won, guys. Uh, well, it's unfortunate. What a surprise. <laughs> let's, see, let's see how you do on this one. We sauce? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think? Uh, Mythos. That's correct. Mythos. Mythos. Euthos. <laughs> Very good. Well, great job, Eamon. Well, wow, thanks. Nicely done. How'd you do that? I don't How'd know. you pull that one out? Kyle, the few watch games closer I'm... next time. <laughs> I will. I <laughs> or will listen uh... closer. Can we hear the mold one one more time? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's listen to that just so everybody's clear. Look at me. I'm growing mold. <laughs> Checks out. Yep. Nicely done, Eamon. Very good. You're the so, hero we thank need. You. It's sad that the only time I win these games is when, when it's rigged. rigged in my favor. <laughs> just like this last election, guys. Am I right? Hey, uh. <laughs> All right, well, let's talk about this episode. What are our thoughts? This is a good episode, but I something about it, it's not one of my favorites. Interesting. Is, is it because we live in a fallen world full of white supremacists? Maybe. <laughs> I love this episode. This is great. I think there are some interesting moral questions in it. I think that the flashbacks and the production value and all that stuff is some of the best we've ever seen. I think the fighting is great. I could see Mac karate fight 
neo Nazis all day. I am way into this. I think this is fantastic. Interesting. I feel like in my notes, I was a little harsher on this episode. Not like harsh, but I was just mm-hmm. like, ah, I wish it was a little this way, a little that way. Uh, but then talking about it, I feel like I liked it more. Like, there's a lot to sink your teeth into and discuss. The shots are all great. It's like a it's really well directed. directed episode full of. You know, incredible costuming and action beats and everything. I don't know. This is ticking a lot of boxes for me. I think I just maybe I just wanted more of stuff like this episode is jam packed, which is maybe one reason why it succeeds, because it's like there's not a lot of downtime. Like, I feel like the and plot maybe could deserve more. Like, that's a lot to deal with in this episode. And then we have this like awesome villain. There's two very, very strong plots going on, like Mac and Anne's thing. And then there's this Nazi guy. And I think part of me was just like, I wish this Nazi guy had like more episodes to breathe in and or just a whole story just about him yeah though they do spend a lot of time on him they do yeah this is I don't know, maybe i'm second guessing all my questions about this episode it is it is a pretty solid episode i think yeah i think this episode's dynamite one of the best of this season one of the most memorable episodes of the show dynamite <laughs> <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> uh also that trash can throw I'm going to say it again. It's amazing. That is a good trash can. That is. No! (laughs) The trash can. (laughs) Was was there a moral question in this episode? A mortal question? Yeah. Yeah. Not to throw dudes in the river. Yeah. Well, there is, like, indecision about, you know, like, this penance. What are you supposed to do? What's Mac's role in punishing this guy or taking him on? I don't know that they're necessarily front and center, but they are present. They're definitely there, yeah. Yeah. Like, I don't know if I ever get the impression Mac is, like, struggling. Well, maybe he is. I don't know. It's just what he doesn't seem conflicted, but he seems like he's got a clear path of, like, I'm going to go see what he's like. If he's still a killer, I'm going to take him. If not, I'm not. And he seems like he just kind of withholds judgment until he's... I mean, yeah. kind of it's too late. Like you but. said, the, the questions are present. Like, Bernard is struggling with, like, I murdered somebody. Like, I have to live with... Yeah, that obviously choice. a bad person, right. but you know, and now it's back. Like the past is literally here haunting me in a, a very literal way. Right. I said literal twice on that. That's bad form. Ugh. I don't know if anybody's keeping score. I Lit- am literally. Oh, Kyle, you just lost your one point you got uh, <laughs> for uh, the lamb. Sorry, because the score is actually three to zero. That's nice job, Eamon. Tough oh, but well, fair. Yep. Tough but fair. <laughs> Bernard <laughs> is a little wiener. You so did you did not like Bernard? I don't know why. I, I think it just might be the actor. Huh. I didn't Old like, Bernard what, or young Bernard? Both. Both. <laughs> I didn't really like either of them. How about Paolo Bernard go head to head in a child fight? Oh, <laughs> man. Who, who, who comes out on top? Paolo, because he's much larger. Yeah, that's true. And he has access to a gun. <laughs> he does have access to a gun. And a comb. Yeah. And a sandwich. Oh, yeah, that's right. He's got that baguette. <laughs> Uh, Eamon, you seem to be the most down on this episode. I'm curious if you have more thoughts to share. I don't know what it is. I just, something about it. Not my favorite. Strike you? Yeah. In theory, I like all the stuff that's happening. Just something about it didn't, like, catch the spark in me. I don't know why. Maybe it's the performances. I didn't think it's the all spark. Yeah, not the all, I didn't get the all spark. You got the touch. Is that Transformers? You got the the touches from the... Amazing animated movie. You Star- got the power. Starring Orson Welles. Yeah. yeah. And Leonard Nimoy. And Leonard Nimoy. Ooh. And Judd Nelson. Weird Yankovic has a song. That's right. Yeah. Who else is in that? Eric uh, Idle. Eric Idle, yeah. Wow, they got an all star cast. It is an all star cast. <laughs> it's insane, is what it is. And it's all just a giant toy commercial. It's great. Mm-hmm. And the soundtrack oh, uh, is fucking amazing. Michael Ironsides. Oh, is Michael Ironsides in that? I think so. Vince DeCola did the music. Yeah. Ooh. The music in that is actually like. He also composed- did the music for like Rocky 3 and 4. That sounds right. So we ready to rate this bitch? Yeah, yeah I guess so. How many drowned, chained up, nopsy, nopsy corpses would you give this? <laughs> no, even it's pronounced nopsy. <laughs> nopsy. I think presidentially it's pronounced nazi, right? Nazi. Jaina. I think I'm going to give this four. Four, wow. Four, yeah. Four drowned Nazis. Right. That's that's a lot of bloated corpses. Kyle, how many uh, Eucharists would you give this? So am I getting like the ceremony or are we talking about the wafers? Just the wafer. Just the wafer. Okay, I will give this 4.5. Wow. Broken bodies of Christ. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> 4.5. That's a high yeah, score. This, I mean, I don't know. This episode really does it for me. 
It's got a strong historical connection. It makes good use of the unique storytelling medium they have. It's full of these like kind of iconic, brutal moments. The action is off the charts, well shot. What more could you really ask for? Something you mentioned about, like, did you say brutalness in this yeah, episode? It's like, a brutal I, episode. I give this episode, I think I've made mention of this before. I'm like, I give this pro- this episode props for being violent. You guys are like, what the fuck are you <laughs> talking about? This is in a, a scenario where I appreciate the violence. And, like, this and episode, it's in service of something. It, like, it gives you a visceral reaction like the amount of gunfire like all the war stuff feels very like real like mm-hmm. it, it kind of I, I thought the episode does a good job of like transporting you back to that time and also yeah like when damler fucking beats a man with a chain and shoots bernard like in cold blood it's like shocking it's like oh shit like that's good yeah they don't have plot armor and you know we got a returning character yeah, yeah. how long, often does that happen and who georgie does a great performance curious georgie nails it how many brita filters would you give this one <laughs> I'm going to do a three for my own weird bias that I can't really put my finger on. It's fine. I'm wondering if anybody out there in podcast land agrees with me. Like all of us, we're looking for affirmation of our own opinions. That's right. right. <laughs> this has a lot of good stuff in it, and I really love like the final act of this whole thing. Mm-hmm. I think it's really cool. Dynamite. Dynamite. Well, everyone, thanks for joining us this week on this episode of the podcast. And join us next week when we're going to be talking about Season 3, Episode 20, Reasonable Doubt. Mm. We've been your rewatchers. I'm Keith. This is Kyle. This is Lyman. Bye-bye. See you. Bye. Sorry, not sorry. All right, so hashtag. Do we Mac get is like oh, not, not not who, what? Do we get any hashtag submissions? Oh, didn't yeah. we ask for? Yeah. Oh, come on. What guys. the fuck, readers? At Barge Life would be pretty good.